Hello everyone and welcome to episode 39 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that 77% of enterprises have at least one application or a portion of their enterprise computing infrastructure in the cloud. Enterprises predict they'll invest on average 3.5 million US dollars on cloud apps platforms and services this year. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips considering your journey into the cloud. Hey Dave, it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's, it's, it's uh, interesting to look at this data coming in in terms of people's sustainability in terms of their second tier movement into the cloud. Yeah, it truly is. So we've got a great opening question for you is, are we nearing being done with this journey to cloud? Yeah, God no. Um, ultimately, I think that uh, um, we're at about 20 to 25 percent, um, you know, penetration in the cloud. And if you take SaaS out of that mix, it may be 10 percent for most enterprises out there. And I think that certainly I believe 70, 77 percent of enterprises have at least one application in the cloud. Um, you know, that's kind of small potatoes. It should be 100 percent. I can't imagine anybody's not using Salesforce or you know, some other SaaS based system, which is augmenting their existing stuff. And I suspect that if we went back to this population and we asked them the, the questions in the appropriate way, they'd probably answer 100% just because they're leveraging Google Docs, they're leveraging Microsoft 365, you know, all these sorts of things are basically part of their infrastructure. But the big stakes are going to be in moving the application workloads and the databases to the cloud. And that's really where the enterprises are spending all their time and money and moving systems moving forward. So going forward, it's going to have to be identifying the right applications, making the moves, augmenting the technology, migrating to different databases, dealing with different storage platforms, security, governance, I mean, all the things that really kind of come along with, with moving into the cloud. And that's going to be a harder trudge from uh, where we went from, you know, cloud five years ago to where we are today. I think that the low hanging fruit has pretty much been migrated. And so we're going to spend the next five to 10 years with harder workloads and applications, which are probably worth more to the enterprises that are leveraging those applications, but are going to be much more harder and expensive to move. And so it's going to be slow going, um, not necessarily because the enterprises don't want to move faster, but because the existing technologies, the legacy stuff is going to have to undergo redesign, re-engineering around performance, re-engineering around security and governance and all these things would really come to you know come forward in terms of moving everything to the cloud but if they do that right the first time they get these things localized as cloud native applications on the cloud systems then they're going to be there and they're not don't necessarily have to go back and revisit those things they're the end of a devops chain they're they're the end of a proactive security environment they're the end of a governance chain they're in a cost usage analysis and all these things that are very important to operating these things and once they're kind of in an op state and it's very successful, then they're kind of there. And I think enterprises are going to really have to batten down the ashes, spend some money in order to get there in five to 10 years. But the reality, if they move there, agility is going to be at their beck and call, time to market is going to be compressed, and their operational dollars are going to be able to be reinvest reinvested back into the company. And that's what it means. That's what IT is there for. They're there to make business successful. Yeah, no, absolutely right. I think that I, I was going to say to you is that where do you think the biggest pain point is within organizations that aren't migrating everything into a cloud environment? I mean, you know, you're covering off the, the main sort of interactive sales, Salesforce and sorry, SaaS platforms, which are, you know, doing a lot of heavy lifting with joining up the, the teams when it comes to, you know, real time statistics and figures, etc. So where, where's the heavy lifting in the back end? Where's that pain point for organizations, do you think? I, I think it's around getting um, the workloads in, in a state that's going to be migratable to the cloud. I think that, uh, you know, uh, three or four years ago, we thought lift and shift was going to be, uh, you know, everything that's going to work most of the time. Well, I didn't think that, but other people thought that in the industry. And the reality is it has to be refactored, and refactoring means rewriting and redeploying, and that's going to be an expensive proposition. So the pain point is figuring out which one of those workloads need to be refactored, figuring out a refactoring approach, re-architecting them, re-securing them, re-governing them, and then putting them back into the application portfolio, and also putting the ones that are homegrown and, and the ones we develop, put it as part of the DevOps chain. So there's a ton of work that has to occur between 
some legacy system that's running on a LAMP stack um, and the thing running in the cloud in a cloud native way that's going to be very effective and efficient in a secure way that's going to be better than the application that came from the on-premise system. And I think that going forward, the ability to kind of get from this step one to step two is, is just going to be a huge journey for many of the enterprises out there. And there's no shortcuts to it. There's no magical bullets. You know, there's methodologies and lots of things I've written and spoken about in terms of uh, ways in which you can move through this, you know, 25 step process, you know, to get to this state, the reality is you have to go through it. And so there's no, there's no easy way around it. So there's no tool to do it. There's no, you know, wand you can wave. And so that's going to be an expensive, long, risky, hard, um, and a very frustrating journey for most enterprises out there. Yeah, for real, for real. I sound a bit like Ali G then, didn't I? I didn't mean to sound. I didn't mean to sound like Ali G. For real, you know. I think I think you're absolutely right, and there's a lot in the C-suites that will agree with you on there, and a huge amount of frustration I know at C level uh, when when they can't do what they need to do for the good of the business because of maybe a board decision or something. So uh, you know, it, it absolutely is a, a reality to a lot of people out there. Hence why it's not something that um, is necessarily being accomplished with that move into the cloud. Um, and and you know, you're talking about a magic bullet you know we've got two magic bullets Dave uh, may I say that we've got you and we've got me so I think with that combination we've got the <laughs> we've got the expertise and then we've got me that can come in and sort of say okay who do you need to fill the role <laughs> there you go I think if we had magic bullets we end up shooting shooting each other with them so. and, and and we we could do that and never die so because they're magic <laughs> bullets <laughs> Anyway, we've digressed, we've digressed. Um, look, Dave, um, it moves on to that part of the show now where we talk about your top three tips for considering the journey into cloud. If you'd like to share, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, number one, I mean, this is pretty pretty obvious, but I think it needs to be stated. The cloud is a journey, you know, that's continuously improved. And so um, the worst thing you can do is basically try to do the same thing over and over again and expect continuous improvement. So you have to basically return to the processes, return to the tool sets, return to the technology you're leveraging and ask the question, is there any better way to do this? And I just see a lot of enterprises have a tendency to get caught up in this, this kind of thought process where they have to leverage the same tools and technology each and every time, even if it did work the first time, it may not work as better, you know, the best it can be the second time. It needs to be improved. We need to consider other technologies. And that's kind of a, uh, a state of mind that I think a lot of enterprises aren't in right now. And they have to get themselves in that state of mind. Security and governance need to be throughout. And we always say the security and governance have to be systemic. Typically, it's not. I mean, I wrote a, a blog this week on how to retrofit security, you know, into applications that have already moved to the cloud. And that, that should never be done. It should be built into the applications in terms of, how, the, how we're dealing with data and encryption, identity access management, which is systemic within the workload, not necessarily something we're able to wrap around the workload. That's typically not the way to do it. So you need to think about this stuff ongoing. Those people need to be part of the project from the beginning. And don't be afraid to move workloads back if needed. I mean, there's some instances where you remove a workload in the cloud and you realize it was absolutely the wrong thing to do because latency issues, security issues, you can't change certain parts of the code because of some proprietary uh, agreement you have with a partner who has written a part, part. We have all kinds of weird things that go on there. It's okay to put it back. And there's always should be a, a, a egress you know, plan to basically get it back into the on-premise system if for some reason it was picked to migrate to the cloud erroneously going forward. I'm seeing a lot of these things going forward, but I'm also seeing the enterprises, once they made the move, they dig their heels in. And so even if this thing costs them a million dollars a week to maintain running in the cloud based on some bad decisions, they have licensing costs and things like that they didn't consider, um, it's okay to hit the reset button. You should always look to hit the reset button if you need to. I always you know, joke around with the other cloud SMEs that I work with, is, you know, like you should start a consulting company that will uh, focus on taking everything in the public cloud and putting it back on the on-premise system where it actually worked. And there's some, you know, there, there's some truth to that. You have to consider the fact that in some issues, and in some instances, we're doing more too quickly than we need to do, and it's okay to basically hit the reset button and go back to where we started. Yeah, great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks for being part of the C-Suite show as always. Great to have you on. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. 
Great. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C Suite show. Uh, you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. There's some graphics on the screen right now. Uh, and also in the links in the description box below, you'll find some of the blogs that David's written for us as well. There's links to our, our website, which take you to all the blogs. There's also links to connect on the social media so you can connect with me and David on social media. We're on Instagram as well, LinkedIn, um, and, and you can get us on Facebook, on the Facebook page, so check it out. And uh, yeah, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video to your friends and your colleagues. Remember to click the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on all the latest releases. Thanks for watching, until next week.